Okay, I think we can get started. So hello everyone, thanks for being here and welcome to this webinar on Python uh, integrated in FCS Express for high dimensional data analysis. So my name is Andrea Valle, I'm product manager at the Novo Software. Today you align with me, uh, Catherine Rittenbach. Um, she will help me in answer all your question in real time. Uh, I will try to do this uh, by with, with my voice, um, Catherine, it's in charge of the uh, question section. So feel free to write in and we will do our best to um, answer any question you have. Um, one more announcement. So this uh, webinar is going to be recorded. So you will receive the recording. But of course, the advantage of being here online uh, today is that you can ask questions. So please do that. OK, so. As usual, I would like to give you a little bit of introduction of what we are going uh, to speak about today. And then we will see some example, and then we will also add some additional uh, details. So first of all, I want to uh, give you some rule of the games in high-dimensional data analysis. Um, this is a little bit to manage expectation about what high dimensional data analysis can do. So we're not speaking about any specific algorithm, any specific uh, software, okay? We're really speaking about high dimensional data analysis, not really in, in flow cytometry, really in general. So first of all, high dimensional data analysis, uh, it's not magic, it doesn't do any miracle, it's just a technique. It's a technique like flow cytometry, like imaging, it's a technique like uh, Western blot and whatever. So if you run some high dimensional data analysis experiment and you don't get the results you want, it's either because the protocol, the pipeline, the high dimensional algorithm that you have selected uh, was not the right one, was not set in the right way, uh, data maybe have not been pre-processed uh, properly, or if you don't find any good result, it's simply because uh, data is data, right? So uh, don't think that high dimensional data analysis can do any miracles. The second good point to keep in mind is when you're in front of your computer running high dimensional data analysis, you are the smartest guy, the smartest guy in the room. So the computer just do uh, what you tell it to do, but you are the one that has to be critics um, about the results. So it's really easy, for example, to create a Disney plot, a Yuma plot, okay? Um, but the crucial point is to create a Disney plot and a Yuma plot and a Flosson plot that are meaningful and that are scientifically relevant, okay? So it's it's really easy to create some fancy picture with Disney, Flosson, Yuma, Spade, and all those stuff. Uh, the crucial point is to create something which is uh, which is good and robust. And we are here today to speak about this. We have a lot of uh, webinar also on our website. We, I will mention a few of them later on. The third point to keep in mind is that I dimensional, again, since it's a technique, okay, uh, require time to be learned and to be mastered. So don't be in a rush, don't be in a hurry, take your time, uh, watch webinars, ask your colleagues, speak with like by informatician, by a statistician uh, in your lab, in your department, uh, read the papers, okay? Like you want to run Disney, read the original paper about Disney. You want to run UMAP, read, read the original paper about UMAP. So take your time because it's a technique. Um, you are an expert in flow cytometry, okay? This is high dimensional data analysis. So take your time to learn it. It's like, if you want to learn like skiing, okay, you will, I'm sure you will not pretend to learn skiing in like one afternoon, right? And the fourth uh, crucial point to keep in mind is that when you run high dimensional data analysis, you're running an experiment. So a lot of people write me saying, I want to learn how to run Disney. So it's not really about running one algorithm, it's about learning which is the protocol, okay, the entire process, okay, exactly as you will never uh, like start a flow cytometry experiment without a protocol, okay, uh, the same thing is 
uh, true for high dimensional data analysis. So you need to sit down and uh, define which are the steps that you want to run and in which order. So keep this in mind. It's like an experiment on your bench. The only difference is that instead of doing that on the bench, you're doing that on the computer. Um, the formal way to, let's say, represent a high dimensional data analysis experiment, it's like a workflow, okay? You have your data and then you run some pre-processing and then you do some analysis. And when I mean analysis in this case, I mean like you run some algorithm. It can be dimensionality reduction, like Disney UMAP, uh, PCA. It can be a clustering, like phenograph, flow sum, park, and whatever. And then you uh, put together everything and you draw some conclusion by comparing samples, uh, calculating like t-test, uh, ANOVA, you put together some nice pictures. So it's an entire workflow. And uh, about pre-processing, I want to mention that we recently hold a um, nice series of webinar. Let me open this parenthesis. If you go on our website, and you go to the video page you see here. And I'm mentioning this because today we will speak about a very specific step, which is the Python integration. But don't forget that there is a lot upstream of this. So if you go to the video resource page and you scroll down, you have an entire section about high dimensional data analysis. And we recently organized four webinars all about pre processing data pre-processing so all what you need to do to prepare the data to then run Disney, UMAP, Flowsum, uh, Python, Phenograph and whatever so this is what you need to do before and you see we have four okay an introduction to pipelines scaling normalization and downsampling okay those are not the only pre-processing step that you might want to do but those are basically the most wanted so this is why we focused on them. Okay, having said that, so now you know that you need to do something before running uh, your algorithm, which is pre-processing. Um, I want to mention that the entire process that you see here at the right, so pre-processing and the analysis, okay, can be formally run by creating a pipeline into your software, okay? Uh, bioinformatician do it directly in R, in Python, in MATLAB, okay? The beauty of doing this in FCS Express is that you can integrate a pipeline, so a series of uh, steps and calculation directly in your layout, okay? So this way you can create gates, you can create high resolution pictures, you can do overlays and whatever, all together into the same platform. And again, let me repeat this once more. So today we will speak about one specific step of this portion of the workflow, but don't forget about the pre-processing. Okay, so what's a pipeline? Why I told you that you can execute, you can run the experiment, the high-dimensional data analysis experiment by creating a pipeline. A pipeline is nothing else than a series of steps. Usually those are mathematical calculations. And the crucial point, there are actually two crucial points. So those steps are connected in a series, okay? So you have the first one, the second one, the third one, and they are ordered in a specific order. And you are the one that decide which steps to uh, include in the pipeline and in which order. And if you, if you, um, if you um, think at your bench experiment, like a flow cytometry experiment, uh, it's the same thing happening uh, every day, right? So you have a protocol, which is a series of steps, and you decide which step to include. You have a washing step, a centrifuge, and then you remove the surnatant, and then you add the antibody, and then you wait, and then you put in the fridge, and then you add uh, some uh, buffer, washing buffer, and then you centrifuge and whatever. So you decide which step to include and in which order. The pipeline, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. So, as I mentioned on the website, we have already a webinar that speak about pipelines. Let me go back here, you see pipelines, okay, which is the part one of this series of webinar. You see part two, part three, and part four. 
Today, we will speak about something that comes later afterward, and it's how to integrate Python uh, in your pipeline. So the idea is that you create the pipeline, you run your pre-processing step, and then you start adding algorithms. Okay, it can be like UMAP, Tizen, and Flowsum, and it can also be Python. So it's just a new way of running um, algorithm for high-dimensional data analysis. There is nothing to be scared. So I always like to add some details and like to let's say add some context um, to to what I present. So why Python? Python it's a high-level programming language. Uh, it's really powerful, really powerful. It has been it's still uh, developed, but it was born in the late 80s. Uh, the current Python version is the version 3, actually 3.10, but anyway, version 3 that was released in 2008. You may say, well, it's old. It's not, okay? It's a language, so a language is not really changing that much uh, over the time. Um, we will see that people create libraries, we will see what the libraries is, basically every day. So every day, the Python word increase in terms of power and functionality. But the language, the Python language, uh, basically it didn't change that much uh, since 2008. So, um, and it didn't, didn't really need to change that much. Now, one key point of Python, okay, uh, as compared to other languages like R, just to mention one, is that indentation really uh, represents a crucial point in Python language. So the idea is that with indentation you can, and people who create script, can make the script really readable and user-friendly to the users. So we are not going to learn Python to not, today, uh, but if you look at this script, this is a Python script, uh, you see we have, it's just an example, okay, we have like, we are assigning a value of 2 to something called x, we are assigning a value of 5 to something called y, okay, it's really intuitive, and then we have this, this is just a sort of uh, conditional, okay, part, so we say if x is larger than y, then do something. And in this case, what we are doing, what we are telling Python to do, it's printing x is larger than y. Uh, when x is lower, it's smaller than y, we say x is smaller than y and so on. So the crucial point why I showed you that, why I showed you this, is the indentation. So thanks to this indentation, okay, let me change the color um, green. Uh, thanks to this indentation, you can clearly see that this action, okay, belongs to this piece of code. This action belongs to this piece of code. So you can increase the indentation, of course. You might have, let's say, nested piece of code, and this makes your life really easy when you want to read the code, uh, even at a higher level. Now, I already mentioned this word, so libraries. It's not something specific for Python, actually. Uh, you can, you, you deal with libraries with, uh, when you deal with a lot of programming languages, sometimes, sometimes they are called like packages, modules, or libraries. So they are nothing else than a collection of functions. And you might say, why I need functions? So when you install Python on your computer, you basically install the language, okay? With some basic capabilities like, of course, you can like do uh, like mathematical calculation, like plus and minus and divide and multiplication, if else, as we saw as we saw before. Okay, but you cannot run Disney unless you start coding and you spend maybe one month coding Disney. So when you start install Python, you only have basically the language. So uh, you can install, you can give Python extra power, but by adding libraries. It's basically the same thing that you do with your mobile phone. So you purchase the mobile phone, it can do amazing stuff, but at the end it's like an empty mobile phone, right? And then you start uh, downloading and installing apps. So libraries are basically like apps. So it's just to give extra power to Python. You may say, why 
uh, the Python installation doesn't come with all the apps already installed. Well, it will be impossible. Like probably the hard drive of your computer and also the hard drive of my computer will never be enough to include all the libraries available on the world uh, for Python. Exactly as you don't want to have all the apps available uh, on, on your mobile phone, right? So you want to be the one that decide what to install and not. And then there is a sec second term that uh, you might want to keep in mind when speaking uh, about Python with someone, it's environment. So an environment, it's a collection of libraries. Okay, you might say, okay, I install Python and then I install like four libraries because I want to be able to run Disney and there is a library for Disney, uh, UMAP, and there is a library for UMAP and Flosa. Okay, so three libraries. Now, an environment, it's a collection of libraries. So you might say, I want to call this collection of three libraries um, my favorite Python environment or whatever you want. Okay, so why managing libraries with environment? So it simplified the installation. So instead, the next time, uh, that you want to install those three libraries like Disney, UMAP, and Flosam, uh, you will not install them one by one. Okay, if you have an environment that tells Python to install those three libraries, you can simply install uh, the environment and it will be much faster and easier. Then it minimizes uh, reproducibility issue because if you create an environment on your site, okay, with like 10 different libraries, and you want me to uh, use the same exact libraries with the same exact versions, okay? Just share with me the environment. So I will be able to install the environment and Python will take care of installing all those libraries by taking care also to install the right version. So the same version that you have. So this is a way to ensure reproducibility. Uh, avoid system pollution because whenever you want, you can just delete the environment and you will delete all the library that uh, are included, so that's cool. And uh, sidestep dependency conflict. So, I mean, this is not the case, but people that are using Python really heavily uh, usually have different environments for different projects. And this is good because all of the other reasons above, and also because for different projects, you might need different versions of the same library. Okay, it might happen. So for one project, I want the Disney library version one, and for another pro project, Disney library version 1.2, okay, for some reasons. So you can deal with different version of the same library thanks to environment. And you will see in a while why uh, this is useful uh, for what you are going to do. But again, this is just to give you a flavor of Python and on the Python world. So, what do you want what what do you need to do if you want to use python in fcs express so if you want to integrate a python script into an fcs express pipeline so first of all you need to install python then you need to load the environment uh including all the libraries required to run all the cool algorithms that you want and then you need to put your hands on the script and then use it in FCS Express. So you might say, wow, I can I, how can I start doing that? So likely for point number one, two, and three, we have a very easy solution. So let me go back to our website. This is still the video page. Um, if you click on this lens, you don't need to be on the video page. You can also be on the main web page. So here. So if you click on the lens, you can then search for Python, okay? And then you will see different like results. And the first one, it's Python transformation. So this is a web page on the DeNovo software website. And you see that we have here installation instruction. So let me go back here. You see first install Python, load the environment and all the libraries. Okay. so. Installing Python, you need to run through these two steps. Install Visual C++. And here, if you expand, you have a step-by-step -step procedure. It's amazing. It's really step-by-step. -step. So 
uh, we should thanks Catherine. She's online uh, with the line. So she put together this amazing step-by-step uh, -step, uh, procedure with screenshot. Uh, then you can install Python, same stuff with all the screenshot, screenshot. And, oh, sorry, let me open it again. Here, you see, download the FCS Express environment. We call it FCS Express. Um, we could have called it uh, anything, but anyway, this is the environment, okay? that include all the libraries that will be uh, required to run all the script that you see below. Okay, you see PARC, HDB scan, TrimUp, FLTs, FITSNI, PACMAP, and so on. So of course, if you want, you can add other libraries, you can run other scripts that are not here. So what we try to do is to provide you with some example, like those eight examples, and provide you already with the environment, uh, which include all the libraries to run those examples, okay? But of course you can run much more if you want. It's just a way for us to simplify your life. So you see, this is a really step-by-step -step procedure. You, can, you cannot uh, screw up anything. Uh, so it's really easy to do. And then you see you have used it in your FCS Express pipeline. And we actually also in this page, we have this other step you see here, how to use example script below. So I don't want to show you to show this here because we are going to, to do it uh, together. But anyway, if you forget something about the uh, training today, uh, just go back here to this Python transformation web page, and you will have the step-by-step -step procedure. So no worry. And of course, you can send us an email and we will be glad to help you. Okay, so now that you know where to grab information, let's go back and uh, let's, let's see uh, how to do it practically. So let's say that you uh, install Python, you load the environment that you can download from our website. And then you see here, you grab the script you want to run. And again, we have multiples. Okay, we will do something with like two or three or four of them just to just to give it a try. Okay, so first of all, we need uh, after installing Python, after the installing the environment, but again, you have all those information, all those instruction. First of all, we need to open FCS Express, uh, create some plots and gates, create the pipeline and add some pre-processing step, okay, before adding the Python transformation. So let me close and let's do it in real time. So this is a blank layout of FCS Express. Okay, for those of you who are not familiar with, with FCS Express, this is really similar to PowerPoint, but it's FCS Express. Everything is done from the ribbon bar. So if you want to open plots, just go to the insert tab. If you want to create gates, just go to the gating tab. I have already created a plot and a gate. If you want to open a new plot, we will work with the cells gate. Those are lymphocytes. Simply drag and drop the gate out. Okay, now you see you have a second plot already gated on cells. How to get started with the pipeline? Uh, remember, we have a video dedicated to these, but anyway, worth mentioning, go to tools, transformations, and open the transformation dialog. It's empty because we didn't create any pipeline yet, and you can grab the pipeline from this drop-down menu. So, I always remember, I, I always uh, um, mention this. When you open this drop-down menu, you see transformations algorithms such as K-means, PCA, uh, Spade, Disney. So those are there just for compatibility reasons um, for people who created layout with all versions of FCS Express. So you, you don't really need to use those. Okay, even if you want to run Tisney or Spade, you don't need to use those. The way to go nowadays, it's with the pipeline. So feel free to click on pipeline. And basically what we have created now, you see new pipeline. This is the main pipeline route or like main pipeline step, main pipeline body. You can call it as you want. It's like a box in which we're going to add all the steps we want in the orders, in the order we want. So what you can do here, it's selecting if you want an input gate, selecting if you want parameters. Um, 
you can start with like all cells and you can start with all parameters basically what you're deciding here it's which events and which parameters you want to be accessible within the pipeline okay you're not telling run my algorithms on all parameters run my algorithms on all events you're just telling within the pipeline i want to be able to access all the events maybe i will not okay maybe i will add the gate later on but i want to be able uh, to access all events and i want to be able to access to all parameters okay so you can keep uh, those as they are so let's start by adding some steps so you see here you can click and you can add steps uh, we organize them in hopefully some meaningful categories like predefined algorithms those are like mini pipeline flow sum, phenograph, spade, flow cat, flow AI, downsampling, okay, good, for example, to add a gate downsampling step, okay, so this, uh, it's something new, so when you add a pipeline step, uh, let me draw, here we go, you see, when you create the pipeline, by default, this checkbox, it's checked, automatically run the pipeline, so this message, it's nothing else than asking you whether you want to switch off this checkbox. So I say, yes. Why? And let me go back. You see, it's checked off. Uh, why? Because most of the time you're going to run some heavy calculation on some big files. So you don't want the pipeline to be automatically recalculated. You want to be the one deciding when the pipeline will be recalculated by pressing manually pressing this execute transformation pipeline okay if you're running a, something very easy on a very small file then feel free to say no so that this will be uh, will remain checked otherwise i suggest uncheck it okay step one gate down sampling and we want to gate on cells so the first step of our pip pipeline will simply be a gating step then uh, let's do some very basic pre-processing scaling okay remember we have uh, an entire webinar about scaling it's really important and we want to scale some parameter of interest okay and then what else we can add uh, down sampling again we have another entire webinar all dedicated on down sampling you see we have many options about down sampling i will do something really straightforward and easy interval down sampling let's say 10,000. We, we don't need much event. I just want to show you how to create it. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, again, since the order really matters, if you add step and they end up not being in the right order as you want, you see you can reorder them. Okay, I can move this interval down sampling upstream the scaling or I can move it down. Okay, so you can do that. Okay, so, so far, our pipeline doesn't do anything uh, really interesting. It's just gating, scaling, and downsampling. And so this is the moment, let's say that the pre-processing, it's, it's okay for this data set. This is the moment in which you start adding the algorithms. So you can add flow sum, UMAP, you can add flow sum, UMAP, and TISNI, okay? You can add multiple, right? Today, we focus on the Python transformations. So I will go here, miscellaneous, and I will add a python transformation pipeline step you see it's really similar to other transformation like umap and flow sum because anyway also in this case you need to select the input parameters that of course will be the scaled okay uh, this is the same thing that happened uh, with umap with flow sum with tisney so which are the parameters that you want to run the transformation on and and then this is the special part of the Python transformation. Okay, you see here we have a Python script. Okay, this is where we are going either to write the script, okay, with our hands, or whether we are going where we are going to copy paste. Okay, what you see here it's an example script. It's basically just the instruction on how to use it. Um, they might sound like a, uncomprehensible I know uh, but don't don't be afraid don't be afraid okay so let me go back here we want to go really step by step okay so you create the pipeline 
you start adding the pre-processing step like scaling, gating, downsampling, normalization, whatever, and then you add the algorithms. And in this case, we add the Python transformation. And what else? This is the results, right? We have our Python transformation. We selected the parameter of interest, okay? Now we're going to paste the script. And please look, after pasting the script, this portion of the window will be populated with some options. But if you look at the, at the window right now, okay, it's not populated, right? You see, it's blank. Well, this is because this part of the dialogue, it's actually programmable based on the script. So let's grab any script like uh, PacMap. Okay, so you see, you open these, you have some reference. I always like to add the link to the original paper. You see this one, okay? I always like to add the link to the like GitHub uh, repository and whatever. Um, I like to mention which are the dependency. So those are the library that are uh, required, Pandas and PacMap. You don't need to install them because you have already uh, install the environment, okay? But if someone wants to do something custom, those are the dependency. And this is the script, okay? Be sure to copy, copy it entirely, you see, from the top, you see here, and then go down till the end. Do not skip any line, do not skip any letters, okay? So, uh, copy. And here you need to clean this uh, example script. So you can right click and clear script. Now you need to paste it. So two things to keep in mind. Uh, remember indentation, it's really crucial. So you cannot paste it wherever you want. You need to paste it, okay, in the first line, in the first, let's say, position. Um, and the second thing to keep in mind is that we didn't activate here the, uh, copy and paste through right click. So you need you need to use your keyboards like Control B. Okay, so Control B. And you see now the script. It's here. Okay, uh, we were smart enough to automatically detect which word it's a function and label it in purple. So this makes the script even more readable on top of the indentation. Um, special function, those are functions specifically related to FCS Express are in blue and numbers are in red. So it's just a way to make the uh, script more readable. And then you can press on save. And you see that immediately the user defined option section, it's populated. And it's, pop it's not populated randomly, okay, by some like mysterious options. So these, these options, you see number of dimensions, two, number of neighbors, none, MN ratio, zero, five. Those are all coded into the script. You see, one of the functions that I was mentioning uh, in blue, it's register option. So this is the way in which you, or maybe your bioinformatician, can program this portion of the dialogue. You see, for example, this one register an integer option called number of dimension, and this is the default value. And indeed at the bottom, you can clearly see that FCS Express understand this language and populate this section with number of dimension to two. So why we did this? Because in this way, okay, you can program this section, and then whenever you want to change any option, you don't need to put your hand in the script any longer, okay? Once the script is there, you don't need to go back. You can just work here and say, okay, if the number of dimension that I want is three, I will simply change this to three. If I want to change the FP ratio to four, I will change it to four, okay? So this is something really useful. We couldn't do that for the R integration a few years ago, but we were able to do this for the Python integration. It's amazing, it's amazing, because even if you ask someone writing you the script, maybe, again, you have some bioinformatician or biostatistician, or you are a bioinformatician or biostatistician coding in Python, you can run the script and make it really user-friendly 
for um, your colleagues. Okay, let me drag and drop the pipeline on top of uh, the plot. Nothing happened because we didn't press execute transformation pipeline yet. So I'm going to press uh, execution um, execute transformation pipeline. Now it's running. Uh, it's done. It's pretty fast. I I I will mention that I should mention that Python it's pretty fast. Um, usually faster than R. It's it will never be as fast as FCS Express. Okay, like so you see here we have embedded transformations such as Tizni or UMAP, for example, or here we have flow sum, phenograph, and spade. So if you create some Python transformation steps and you run UMAP through Python, will never be as fast as the UMAP that it's already integrated in FCS Express. So if you want to run UMAP and flow sum and phenograph, do that with the embedded function and use the Python integration to do something more, something different, right? So we don't have PacMap, you can run PacMap uh, through Python. And um, yeah, here we go. So you see now I can say, I don't know, like change, display the legend, and maybe I want to see where my CD8 are, okay? Maybe I want to see where my CD4 are and so on. So just to show you, if you change the option, so if I go there and I say, okay, now I want to increase the number of dimension of PacMap, instead of PacMap, PacMap 1 and 2 only, I want to create PacMap 1, 2, and 3 for some reason. So I can change this without put my hands on the codes and, and then click on Execute Transformation Pipeline. And you will see that on top of PacMap 1, 2, we will also have PacMap 3. Here we go. You see? PacMap 3. So it's really cool. Now, let me go back because now you know how to do it. You know that, you know that it's really easy to do it. But um, I want to provide you some more information. I think it's useful to go a little bit more in depth so that if you want to do something more than simply copy and paste, uh, if you want to... Uh, discuss with your bioinformatician, uh, you will have more information and more knowledge. So you see here we have a lot of script and I want to take just one as an example, um, this one, FITSNE, okay? So imagine to copy and paste this one and you can clearly see that based on the indentation, it's subdivided in different section, okay? So let me go back here and Let's have a look at how this script looks. I just copy and paste it uh, on a blank screen and on a black screen and add some color so that you can see it. But basically what you can see, if you look at all the script that you have in that page, you will always see this organization. So you have a first block of commands that uh, loads libraries. And again, Python, Python it's really resource uh, conscious. Uh, so remember, it doesn't come with all the libraries available already installed. So you only install the libraries that you want. And also when you run your script, it doesn't load all the libraries. Uh, maybe you just need like two and then you load like 1000. No, it just loads the very uh, library that you really need to run the script. So in this case, you see, we are loading uh, this library this library and this library, okay? And actually it's so specific and so efficient that it actually loads specific function out of the libraries, okay? You see from pandas import data frame, from open Disney import Disney. So uh, it's really efficient. Uh, then you have this block of, of codes, you see register option. This is one of the three FCS, FCS Express specific function. So FCS Express will look at this script, okay? And then we'll run those three function. And those three function are quite, let's say, intuitive. Uh, the first one is to register options. So those are the options. So the name and the default setting uh, that you want to use to populate the bottom part. Let me go back here. Uh, that you want to use to populate this, okay, this part. 
Okay, so with that function, you define which options or which the, which name and which default. So for example, this one, this is Disney. I want a function called number of iteration and I want default it to 750. I want a function called perplexity. I want to default it to 30 and so on and so on and so on. Uh, the second one, register parameters, it's to define the name of the output parameters. Remember in my PacMap script, okay, the output parameter were called PacMap3, PacMap2, PacMap1. So FCS Express doesn't know that, a Python doesn't know that, it's just me that um, I wrote these into the script, okay? Me or you or whoever wrote the script. Um, what else? The execute function is basically when the magic happens. So in the execute function, FCS Express will call Python and will say looks Python using the user option that the user has defined and uh, based on the library that the user has loaded, please run this script. Okay, this is basically what it's actually run in Python. And you see at the end, I'm basically saving return results and results are FITSNE1, FITSNE2, which are basically the two name that I coded here. So let's do something, okay. Let me go here and let's switch this off for a while. I mean, we can keep it there. And let's add another Python transformation. Okay, uh, worth mentioning, since you might want to add multiple transformation like QMAP, Flow, Sum, Disney. So when you add them from, from these categories, they are already named in a mean, meaningful name. Like if you add UMAP, it will, it will be called UMAP, right? In this case, it's just called Python transformation. So it doesn't really help you in, in remembering which is which. So for example, this is PacMap. So I can right click rename pack map and this is f i also oh, sorry right click uh, f i his name so let's go back and let's copy tisney this is tisney yes so oops da -da 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 -da. okay and here we go clear and save. Now this is what I wanted to show you. So remember the options that I showed you here? Let me zoom in. Okay, have a look at those options really carefully. This is the same script that I copy and pasted. I told FCS Express to create an option called number of iteration and default it to 750. And look at the right, okay, we have indeed an option which is called number of iteration defaulted to 750. And then you have perplexity 30, bar sat theta 05, perplexity 30, bar sat theta 05. So this is the way you can program this portion of the dialog. And when FCS Express will run the script, okay, will not use those values, will use this value. Of course, if you don't change them, that's fine. But now if I go here and say, okay, want to decrease the number of iteration to 500. Okay, FCS Express, it's going to use 500. It's not going to use 750. That was only the default one. So why I'm telling you this? Because again, to, to underline that once you uh, put your script here and FCS Express populated the user defined options, you don't really need to go back and change the script. Okay, so let me select some meaningful parameters and execute transformation pipeline. So now FCS Express will run a gate down sample. So will gate with scale, will uh, down sample to 10,000 within the sales gate, will run FITSNE first, will generate FITSNE one and two, and will run PACMAP secondly, will generate PACMAP one, two, and I guess three because we set to uh, three. So PacMap, it's faster than Tisney. Uh, Tisney, it's usually the slowest. Uh, but anyway, I was surprised. So Python is really much faster than, than R. So 
uh, probably, so I did some tests. Oh, it's already, no, oh, okay, so I have time. So I did some tests. So the slowest, it's probably IVIS and HDB scan. Okay, so all the other one, you can run them on like one million of data points in like 10 minutes. Uh, IVIS and HDB scan are, are much slower. And, and again, it, it's not a matter of FCS Express. FCS Express is just asking Python to, to run that. Um, okay, so it's done. So you see we have PacMap 1, 2, and 3, and now we also have Tisney 1 and 2. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, Tisney 1 and 2. Okay, so this is just a density plot with color based on the expression of CD4. If you like, um, you can also use color.plot, okay, and then you can use backgating. So I can create a gate, for example, on this island and say unknown. Okay, and you see you can back gate. And again, I just added two Python transformation. You can add as many as you want, and you can also add as many UMAP flow sum Disney as you want. Okay, so the beauty is that you will have um once you have run the pipeline with all those transformations, you will have live updating plots in which you can do backgating, in which you can do like uh, density based on color and all those uh, pretty cool stuff. Okay, so let me go back. We are almost at the end. The next few slides are, let's say, a more in depth. So it's probably good to know that you can do much more than what I showed you. Uh, so, but if you want to run the script that you have on the website again it's just a matter of installing python and copy and paste so what i mean with you can do much more so we have different type of options that you can register you see boolean floating points integer and string okay so for example maybe it might be uh, too small but uh you see here we have integer integer because you don't need any uh, decimal uh, floating because you need decimal. Uh, we have string because you want to type the metric. Okay, and we also have Boolean. Uh, what else? Uh, the second function, which is FCS Express specific, it's registered parameters. Uh, so far, I showed you only auto registered parameter that are fine for dimensionality reduction, like Disney 1, Disney 2, UMAP 1, UMAP 2, PacMap WAP. PacMap 2 and so on, uh, which is this one, okay, registering floating value output. We also have classification assignment. So if your algorithm run a clustering, which is, for example, the case for PARC and HDB scan, then uh, you will use the classification assignment instead of the floating, okay? So you, we can deal with both, okay, numbers and classifications. Um, and again, the execute function can do a lot of stuff. Uh, I will suggest you to uh, to have a look at the manual or just write in an email if you want to do something very advanced there. And I just want to show you how to grab it. So if you go to customer resource and you open the manual, the Python transformation page of the chapter of the manual, it's, okay. It basically recapitulate the ribbon bar. So it's under tools, transformations, pipelines, and sorry, it's a long way, pipeline steps, miscellaneous, and here we go, Python transformations. So this is the Bible for the Python transformations. There are a lot of stuff. So again, if you want to do something real advanced, you will be able to do that. It's really cool. Otherwise, take a message of today if that if you want to run uh, the example script that we have on the Python transformation page, it's just a matter of copy and paste. So I think we are close to the end. We have still a few more minutes. If you want to ask any question, feel free to type in. And just to summarize, so the Python transformation pipeline steps it's just one of the many steps that you can add to your pipeline, but this gives you an unparalleled 
flexibility and power because it's no longer a matter of running all the popular algorithms. Now it's a matter of running basically everything that Python give you access to. So of course we will still integrate script, sorry, we will still integrate into FCS Express algorithms such as UMAP, TZ and Flowsum. So we're not uh, transitioning to like integrating everything through Python or R. This is just if you want to do something more, okay? And again, the two pages to keep in mind are the Python transformation page, where you can find the installation instruction and uh, the example script, and the chapter of the manual in which you can find all the little tiny details about the Python transformations. Okay, so, Okay, so th there is a question uh, that says I was re really surprised by the, by, by the speed. Um, so the minimum requirements for FCS Express are not that high, actually. FCS Express can probably run on a computer which is like 15 years old. Um, so it's more a matter of how fast you want to be. Like I'm using a very norm normal laptop, not even a desktop. Um, so I don't think you need really a lot of power unless you want to run on like millions of data points or unless you want to be fast anyway, uh, no matter which is the, the, the size of the data, just some advice. So if you can, uh, if you can go with a desktop instead of a laptop, do that. Uh, if you can go on a computer with a recent uh, CPU like i7 of the last two generation, do that. Uh, if you want, if you have access to like a good amount of RAM, let's say the minimum will be like 32 if you have large data file, do that. So, um, so 42 FCS file, 10 million cells. So the number of parameters, it's not really uh, an issue. So 32, it's not, uh, it's not an issue, uh, absolutely. If it's 42 files, 10 millions each, okay, you will probably need a like supercomputer or you just, you can just downsample. If it's 10 million total, it's something that you can probably achieve. But anyway, remember, and I want to go back here. If you go to the video download page in the, in the webinar about downsampling, uh, we spoke a lot about non-conventional downsampling. So for example, target density downsampling, um, weighted density downsampling. So those are downsampling that allows you to enrich in rare events and still to downsample. So if you have like 10 million total, if you want to downsample to five and still limiting the risk to lose rare population, that's the way to go. So. It's, it's pretty cool. Is this also applicable for imaging? Absolutely, yes. So uh, FCS Express, it's provided with two flavors, um, uh, flow and image. And actually the third flavor is it's plus, which is the combination of flow and image. Every feature that you have in the flow, it's also available in the image. So absolutely, yes. Okay, is there anything else that I can help with? Any other question? Welcome. So if you, if you want, just write in uh, and we will have a look at this uh, cool data set. So no worry. Okay, I don't see any other, any other question. So thanks to all of you for attending. I hope it was useful. Uh, I know it's a, it's a new topic. It's a really, it, it opens really a lot of new possibility, this Python integration. So we are really excited for this. And if you have like feedbacks and suggestion, uh, feel free to, to write in. We will uh, be super happy to add like other example and to improve it with new functionalities.